So the other, you can see the screen, right? So the yes. after coding our data, the, the other thing to do is uh, cleaning our data. It's very important to clean our data so that it doesn't have any errors, but cleaning data should not result in losing a, a valid data. So we have to make sure what we're going to clean is just a, a data entry that's error and cannot be analyzed. But uh, we should make sure that uh, a valid data is not cleaned. So what we're going to encounter is, I'm sorry, the image is a bit blurry, but you can adjust it on your PC since I have shared with you the PowerPoint. Uh, so uh, the first one that you can encounter is missing data. When we have mi missing data, there are uh, different ways of handling it. Uh, the first one is if the variable is a must have variable, a must have variable means a variable, like it could be our uh, dependent variable or a very important independent variable that we want to analyze. If, uh, if we miss that kind of data, then what we are supposed to do is, if there is another primary source for the data, we have to go and confirm and make sure uh, we get the data. But if we can't obtain the data, we have to delete the entire entry of that patient because we can't analyze a data which doesn't have uh, the critical uh, variables like the outcome of the study. The other is if, uh, when we're dealing with numeric variables and if the variable uh, if the variable has missing values up to like less than 20 percent there's a statistical way of replacing the missing data uh, missing the missing uh, i mean replacing the mean the missing values with the mean of the remaining values is a trend so uh, we're not going to talk about that but there are statistical methods to replace a missing data uh, for a numerical variable if the variable has less than 20% missing values from the entire data set. The other is incompletely filled questionnaire. If we encounter an incompletely filled questionnaire, uh, what we're supposed to do is, uh, if uh, if the, uh, that incompletely uh, filled questionnaire misses a very important variable, like the ones that we have discussed above, or 50% of the question, like let's say that uh, the questionnaire has like 10 questions and if more than 50% of the questions, uh, like six of the questions are not answered, we have to discard the entire uh, data for that particular participant so that it uh, it will not be uh, analyzed. Because if we try to uh, replace the six uh, variable responses uh, by logic or by some other statistical methods, then the entry for this patient is going to be like completely, like more than 50%. Uh, fabricated. So we don't want that kind of thing to happen. So if more than 50% of the questions are unanswered, then we have to discard that entry. Uh, the other is coding errors or incorrect values. Sometimes when uh, our data uh, encoders enter the data, they might uh, type an incorrect uh, value. So if we have, for example, uh, for gender, we have one and two for male and female, but if we get a value of three or four, then what we can do is we go back to the original data source if that's accessible and uh, try to get the proper answer, or we can uh, use logic. For example, uh, if for a male respondent, if you get an answer that says uh, yes to a question uh, of pregnancy, then it's logical uh, to, to correct the answer for pregnancy status into uh, not applicable. So most of the time, I think uh, based on the responses of the other uh, variables, we can feel comfortable uh, to logically uh, replace the value. But if logic doesn't make sense and if we cannot get the primary source of the data, then we have to re remove uh, the data entry as it is. The other is we have to be able to check for logical consistency uh logical consistency is very important cross tabulation i think most of you are familiar with cross tabulation cross tabulation is very good when uh, we do uh, data management and cleaning it's very good way of checking if our data is properly collected for example um if we have uh when you're we are studying some uh disease condition and if we ask the, if the patient has comorbid illness as a no yes question and finally the only comorbid illness that we get is diabetes then the two by two table that we expect should be uh, let's say if we have uh, 50 dm cases then all of the 50 dm cases they have to be here 
because all the DMK, uh, if only uh, DM is the only comorbid illness among the study population, then all the 50 uh, DM cases, they have to be here. But here it says 40 and 10 of them are here. So it, it, we have to make sure that uh, this is a false entry or this is actually uh, an incorrect uh, data. Uh, the same also for uh, yes, we said all of the comorbidness conditions are diabetic, so we don't expect uh, on the no part, we don't expect any number. We, we expect all of the comorbid conditions to be diabetic. Uh, so uh, running a simple cross tabulation will tell us if our uh, data is not logically consistent or not. Uh, this is a very important tool. You should use it. So when we get uh, such illogical data, what we can do is we go back to the original data set. If we have access to it, check uh, if the answers are correct or not. And if we can't get that, then we have to delete the entire response because uh, the result will be um, inaccurate. The other is duplicating trees. Duplicating trees uh, can be found, especially uh, if we have multiple uh, uh, data encoders, they might mistakenly enter the same data by different uh, encoders. Uh, we say to track duplicating trees, we have to use unique ID like MRN. So if we find the same uh, data entry uh, for a given patient, then we have to remove the duplicating tree. The final one is outliers. Uh, outliers can be true outliers or they can be error in data entry. So most of the time, the error outliers can be easily identified using your clinical judgment. For example, if we find the age of a participant to be 210, uh, we know that uh, so far we don't have that kind of uh, uh, age, at least in our setup, <laughs> I don't know. So uh, you can comfortably say that this is uh, an error in data entry. So you can go back to the uh, patient's record and uh, check uh, the true age. But if it's a true outlier, we can uh, present it in our descriptive statistics, but we have to remove it from uh, further regression analysis because it will not make sense. Uh, 